President Biden, as far as we know, has not yet met with any candidates for that open Supreme Court seat. The GOP is already stepping all over one another on how to attack this yet-to-be-named nominee. Senate Republicans are a tad divided on whether it's all-out war that is to be waged against President Biden's promise to pick a black woman for the role. Looks like Josh Hawley and Roger Wicker are openly hand-wringing about President Biden's, quote, criteria. Senator John Kennedy worried about J. Crew catalogs and woke agendas, and Ted Cruz continuing to say that nominating the first black woman to the nation's highest court would be, quote, casually racist. That crowd promising not a single Republican vote. And then there's this other group wondering if they take a more tempered approach to avoid the political peril of waging a fight they know they will not win. It's possible it's all posturing, considering many of President Biden's potential picks have already received Republican votes and won bipartisan support. Three senators backed Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson last year. Those same three supported Candace Jackson for an appeals court post last June, and 14 Republicans voted for District Judge Wilhelmina Wright in 2016 and 15 for Federal Circuit Court Judge Tiffany Cunningham last July. So that makes, you know, the no Republican support thing hypocritical. Not that that ever stops them. Matt Dowd and Michael Steele are here. Michael Steele, what do you think? <laughs> oh, Nicole. Um, okay, so I, I'm trying to handle this this delicately because oh, don't be delicate. That's really... so boring. This one really struck a nerve with me because, as, as I responded in a tweet directly to the senator, um, so this is what you think of these highly qualified black women, that the best they can bring to you is a J. Crew catalog? I don't even understand the attack. Where, where, what is he? Where, what is? Well, the, well, first off, so the reality of it is, and I want to I want to flip the script a little bit on this. I don't understand why the Democrats give a damn what the right. Republicans do on this on this uh, nomination. I don't know why they're wringing their hands and trying to find a bipartisan vote. If the, if the Republicans want to vote for it, great, show up. This is the day of the vote. Show up and cast the vote. Let the president put forward his nominee. Let any Republican who wishes to visit with that nominee visit with that nominee. But I would not waste my time trying to convince the likes of individuals who cannot, in good conscience, look at the record of these individuals, some of whom they've already voted for, and say, we applaud the president for uh, putting forth uh, at least the names we've seen. This is an incredible group of women. And I look forward to sitting down and talking with them. So unless you've got that coming out of your mouth, why are we wasting time trying to figure out how we get Republicans on board? Why do we give a damn what Ted Cruz thinks? about anything, let alone a black woman on the Supreme Court. And don't get me started on Josh Hawley. All that education, you are dumb as a bag of bricks. So the reality of it is, stop playing this game with these people and understand what the political moment is as well as the historic moment, Democrats, and play to your strengths. You've got in front of you a group of women who have survived a whole lot of crap to get to that point. Try being a black woman in law school, a black woman working her way through a law firm to become a partner, let alone an associate, right? Just go through the process and understand what these women have achieved. And can we for one step back and go, damn, amazing, wonderful. Let's talk about now the competition is who do we put on the court? And, and, and so help move the country off of stupid. Where the, where the Republicans want you to be in trying to defend something that you know is just crazy nonsense. J. Crew, really, Senator Kennedy, that's the best you could come up to say about these black women? I won't even say shame on you because you, it, it is so beyond the pale of ignorance. And the fact that you think that that's cute, that's I, I, I Southern charm, you know, dude, seriously, stop it. Stop it. So I, I just think... President, play play your card. Put have your interviews. Put forward the best qualified black woman on the list that you have, and let those guys choke on it. Just let them choke on it because they'll go down in history as the as the senator who voted voted against the first black female, highly qualified, capable, stunningly, amazingly smart woman to the Supreme Court. Matt Dowd. <laughs> 
It's hard to follow that, which I completely uh, agree with. I would just add why this is important. I mean, why I think, and I agree with Michael that the Democrats ought to just say, this is what we're going to do. The Democrats are obviously, the president's going to obviously appoint a very well qualified, probably more qualified than some of the current justices on the court, a, an African American woman. But I do think it tells you a lot about where the Republican Party is. It normally, if people want to sort of make these racially tinged things, they don't say them out loud. They do it in the background. They sort of like, yeah, 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 we'll take a look at her. We'll see, we'll see what she's like. And then they do all their stuff in the background. The idea that they think that saying these things out loud, and I don't think, I disagree with Michael on one thing. I don't think Josh Hawley is dumb as a box of rocks. I think he's smart, but I also think he is completely out of step with where America is on multiculturalism and multiracial, but he knows the base of his political party. And that's what all four of those people you showed, all four of those white Republican senators you showed, the idea that they can say these things out loud and not, not only not get castigated by their party, but celebrated by elements of their, of their base, that that they can say those things, I think is why is why we're in this such this troubling moment that we're in. And the other thing that I they constantly quote, well, why is Joe Biden using quotas? And even Susan Collins alluded to, like, I don't think she should he should have said it this way. That the like the idea that if he says he's going to appoint an African American woman to the Supreme Court. It's for the only reason of a quota, not like she's qualified. That's the part that's like when you pause and think about what they're saying for a minute, they're basically saying the only way an African-American woman can get on the Supreme Court is if it's some political deal to satisfy some quota. And I'll give you a stat if they want to talk about where the Supreme Court is. We've had 115 justices since 1789, 115. 108 have been white men. 108 out of 115 justices since 1789. So if you want to talk about where we need to fix the problem in this, it's not like talking about what's the composure of the nine. It's what have we been dealing with for 240 years with 115 justices where more than 90 or 92 percent of them have been white men. But I think Michael's right. But I think it's an incredible insight that you can say these racist things out loud and not only not get castigated, you're celebrated by part of the base of the party.